So I feel like I should say welcome home uh, on behalf of the league and the fans and certainly, you know, everyone in Winnipeg. Uh, but before we even talk about the return, I want to know what it was like for you being away. I'm sure you saw it because I saw it. Constantly Canadian fans commenting on where you were and what you were doing, cheering for you, but also at the same time, hoping that whenever there was a QB controversy or an opening or a need for a backup that you'd be coming back to the league. What was it like for you since 2019 to have the continued love from Canadian fans? Yeah, I mean, it, it means a lot to me, um, especially the people from Winnipeg. Like, I feel like anything that would happen with me, it would just – getting all that love from, from the CFL fans and specifically the people from Winnipeg, like, I feel like anything that happened with me – Anytime I got cut or anything happened, there's just hundreds of Winnipeg people messaging, DMing, just saying, oh, you know, if it doesn't work out there, come back to the Bombers. And so, you know, just that support those people gave me always meant a lot, especially when, you know, you're getting cut like four times in a matter of six months, you know, and it's not going the best. But these people are still riding with you and supporting you. So um, I think that's, you know, part of the reason why I just love Winnipeg so much, those people the love that they show you and, uh, and have specifically shown me. Um, so it's exciting to be back. And like, I went up there a couple weeks ago and just did a bunch of events around the city. And like the amount of love those people were showing was honestly ridiculous. So I can't wait to get up there for the season. I know it's going to be exciting. So I need, I need to know though, because this was, this was debated online. Was there any doubt, any other destinations? Once you entered the transfer portal, if you will, <laughs> and decided you were coming back, <laughs> Were there any other locales that you were considering? Yeah, I mean, look, I talked to any team that was reaching out because I was doing my own deal. So I felt like I wouldn't have done my due diligence if I didn't just talk to multiple teams. I think, well, I know when I was talking to other teams, they obviously knew, you know, the feelings I had for Winnipeg and, um, you know, how I feel about that city and the coaches and the teammates and everything like that. So I think they knew I was always leaning that way. But again, I kind of had to do my due diligence and reach out to teams and, and talk to whoever wanted to have a conversation. But ultimately, it got down to the point where it was like, OK, Winnipeg's the place where I want to be. Let's just make this thing happen and, and, and move forward. Listen, DB, you talk about the love that, you know, the city of Winnipeg has for him. And I'm familiar with this, C. Strevy, um, with regards to how Winnipeg loves and loves hard. Um, but it's hard not to love a guy like C. Strevy. It's hard not to love him um, because also it was mutual. You know, he 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 paid attention to to what was going on even in his time away. Um, I, I'm interested to know though. Now that you're looking at coming back to Winnipeg, and the last image that the CFL and Bomber fans have of you, you had some fur on in the winter and sunglasses and a bunch of alcoholic beverages or going around with a huge trophy what does it look like for you coming back and and, and and what do you feel where do you feel like let's start here what do you feel like you've uh improved the most on so that you can get back to that picture and that image um before you left yeah so many people always want to ask me like all right what have you gotten better at you know point to something and it's so hard to put my finger on one thing I've got better on when there's been five years of growth. Yeah. You know, I've been, I've been down here in the NFL, continuing to work on my craft, continuing to hone my mindset for five years. And to me, there's just such a difference in being a 24 year old kid coming off your second professional season, winning a Grey cup and coming back in year seven, having been through the experiences that I've been through. And I know you can definitely attest to what it's like, just that maturation process from year two to year seven, you're a completely different person and a completely different player. And again, just having that time to be down here and be around some of the best dudes in the world and just soak up the information and the knowledge that they're giving and try to apply that to my game. Um, it's just really hard to put my finger on one thing specifically, especially when, you know, I've been working, working out, working at my craft, getting better. So I'm just excited, man. I'm just excited to play football. And that's what I just tell everyone. Like, that's why I'm doing this. I'm not doing it for any other reason than, to try to win football games, win championships, and just enjoy playing football again. Because I've been around the ringer of the NFL here for the last few years and just haven't gotten to see the field a ton, which is, you know, it's been a great experience. I'm thankful for it all, but it can be frustrating at times. So I'm just excited to be able to step back into a locker room where I can, you know, be a leader in my own way and, and affect the team and hopefully help us win some games. Well, that aspect of it is interesting because you talk about that five years 
when you look at the quarterback landscape in the CFL, the only QB that is in the same scenario in the same role is Zach in the five years in terms of the difference. So for you to choose to go back to Winnipeg, and as you mentioned, you know, someone who's competitive, who's been playing at the highest level, you know, wanting to get on the field, walk me through that process of deciding that's where I think I'm a good fit given, you know, there's some other CFL fans who are saying, man, can you, can you be the face on the program for our, our squad? Yeah, that is actually a crazy stat, dude, that Zach is the only starter still there. Because there's so, that's the thing about the CFL is there's so much moving around, like especially with quarterbacks, guys bouncing around, everyone's on almost a one-year contract. So there's a lot of movement. So that's, that's a really interesting stat. But for me, like, again, it just came down to the people there. I know what they're about. And those opportunities to play, I feel like they just happen organically and they naturally present themselves. So if you're trying to press and put yourself in a position where maybe it's not the best position for you, but you feel like you're going to have an immediate chance to play, that might not be the best thing for you. You're just pressing a little bit. So to me, it comes down to the people in that locker room, the, the players and coaches and, and that culture. Like, I just know what that's about. I know how I fit in. I know what that looks like. And I think especially when I got back up there a couple weeks ago, it just it's it felt very real. Like I'm down here in Arizona, like thinking about the CFL, it's it doesn't feel as real until you get back up there. You get in Winnipeg, you get in the building around the fans, around your teammates. And it just it literally felt like coming home. I walk in the locker room. I see Dembski. I see Willie. I see Kenny. And it's just we just pick right back up where we left off. And so you just cannot put a price on that in terms of being able to step in and be yourself where people know what you're about. They know how you go about your business on a day to day basis. And I'm excited to just step in there and just keep, you know, being who I am. Going back to familiar place like Winnipeg is for you. Um, like you mentioned, I can only imagine how, you know, at home you must have felt. I'm just thinking about that 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 quarterback locker room. DB, you touched on it already. Um, being there again with with Zach and um, you know him being at the stage of his career that he is, and, and and you being where you are right now, and and I feel like you know you were exciting then. I can only imagine what it's going to be like you know uh, for years to come for you uh, being in Winnipeg. Um, what are those conversations like with Zach? Um, uh, we always talk about how important that quarterback locker room is and and you guys right now have one of the best ones with obviously regarding the experience that you have and Zach has and 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 all of that what is the, what are those conversations like as far as what next year would be like um for you two in that room yeah i mean i reached out to him kind of before this whole thing happened like a day or two before and just reached out and let him know kind of what was going on and so we touched base then i think those conversations are definitely going to ramp up here in the next couple of weeks with things approaching and us kind of bouncing some ideas off each other. Um, I know he mentioned, you know, when we spoke, when this whole thing was going down, Hey, we gotta, we gotta chop it up soon and, and go through some ideas for the season. And so I know he's been doing work on his own and I've been watching the film on my own. So I'm excited to bring, you know, some of the ideas that I have and, and bounce things off of him in terms of, you know, what's the state of the team? Like what's the locker room feeling like, you know, where's the leadership stand? You know, it's obviously been tough the last couple of seasons, the way it's ended. And so, you know, I'm just curious to see, OK, what, what's everything looking like from a from a team standpoint and touch base with them on that. But I think it's pretty well documented when he came in in 2019 and um, I was kind of had my pa package to the playoffs that we had a great relationship and it worked really well. And so I'm excited to kind of just hopefully pick right up where we left off in 2019 with that. When we look at the game and the way it's evolved, you know, from the outside looking in, it seems like. You know, the CFL game, the NCAA game, the NFL game, they're, they're starting to kind of merge and get closer together. But what's the biggest transition for you in terms of transitioning back to the CFL game? Is it some of the throws, some of the reads, some of the verbiage? Uh, what's that going to look like for you? I think, yeah, it's just a lot of the timing, right, with the waggle and the defenses, finding that timing of different route, route concepts. The, the one thing that I always noticed when I went initially from college to the CFL was just the amount of movement in the CFL game. Like everyone on offense is moving. So everyone on defense is moving as opposed to in America, the game is so stagnant. So, I mean, you motion and shift, but like if somebody moves on defense, you see it. And so that was very different for me when I first came up in terms of learning how to read defenses when everyone's moving and that pre and post snap read is much different than it is in America. Um, but with that being said, you know, I've been watching film 
after this whole thing's kind of gone down, getting reacclimated with that. So I think the transition of jumping right back into that is going to be much easier than it was um, when I was a rookie. But again, you know, finding that timing with teammates, throwing different routes with the waggle, it's stuff I've done before. So I'm not necessarily too concerned about it, but I think there'll be a little bit of a process like that first week of camp, like getting back into some of those, the the rhythm and timing of some of those plays. But um, I'm not too worried about being able to pick that back up. Listen, Chris, I, I think that, you know, all of Winnipeg, as well as the CFL, will be able to see um, your growth um, through your playing. And we know that you're going to impact that team from day one, whether, um, you know, Zach is starting and you're coming in the way that you've done in the past or however Coach O's chooses to use you uh, going forward. But I'm interested to hear about the things that we don't really see. Uh, talk to me about some of the, uh, the, the challenges, perhaps, that you may have overcome um, you know, faced maybe for the last few years that have made you, you know, the person that you are today. Um, I truly believe that, you know, athletes really are the sum total of the obstacles that they overcome. Um, what are some of the challenges that you kind of faced that you feel have prepped you for the upcoming season, but also for the rest of your career? Mm hmm. Again, that's a great question. And especially like with your experience, having played professional football, I know, you know what that looks like. And, you know, for me, it's been a lot of, you know, getting cut yep. and just having to scratch and claw my way in onto a team and into a locker room and, you know, learning how to continually be the new guy and create relationships with guys that have no idea who you are, no idea what you're about. And that's a skill, you know, like to be able to step into a, a, a building, you know, day one of camp where no one knows your name and try to make relationships with guys. It's something that you, you can improve on. And I've seen it with myself. So, man, it, it, there's been some hard times. I mean, when I got cut from Arizona and then Baltimore didn't bring me back and then I got cut from Miami and then I signed with the Jets and I wasn't getting any reps in camp and then, you know, was able to have a good preseason, like leading all into that, man, it was hard because I just felt like I couldn't get any momentum. I couldn't get my feet under me. And there was times when before that season with the Jets, I was thinking about coming back to the CFL because I'm like, I'm not getting a fair opportunity. I'm kind of just bouncing around, getting cut before I can even do anything. Um, and so, you know, it, it definitely took a lot of soul searching in terms of, okay, wh what are you about? And when things aren't going your way, how are you going to act on a day-to-day -day basis? Are you going to mope around? Are you going to stop working? What does that look like? And I just really had to challenge myself in terms of, okay, man, like you're frustrated. Things aren't going your way. How are you going to stand up? How are you going to show up today for yourself and the people around you in that locker room? Um, I always just want to be a high energy guy and elevate the people around me. That's kind of what I'm about. And so, you know, I f figured that out about myself that, look, when, when things aren't going your way, you got to just rely on your values of just being a good person and working hard. And that thing, things will take care of themselves. And sometimes, um, you know, I had a speaking engagement a couple of weeks ago where I said this. I'm just like, you might be working for something and you don't get to that, but you get somewhere completely different just simply by working hard and trusting the process. And I've seen that unfold throughout my own career. Some of the most frustrating times have led to some of the best times for me just because I've kept my head down, continue to work hard and be good to the people around me and try to lift my teammates up. And so. Going through all of that, it's really validated, you know, who I am as a person and what I believe. And again, it's made me a stronger leader and given me a better sense of myself. And I'm just excited to bring that to the team and, um, you know, try to incorporate that in the locker room from a leadership perspective. Let, let me ask you this. I think I think quarterbacks are extremely unique species in football where, um, you know, you got to be a quarterback to know what quarterbacks go through. Um, but I think there's a lesson here that a lot of the young, you know, our young listeners uh, across the country uh, can learn from a guy like you um you know I, I vividly remember you uh you know anytime that your number's called you come on the field and everybody in the stadium whether you're home or away goes oh goodness all right he's on the field get ready for everything um but but one of the things that you you've you've done tremendously well for your time that you spent in the cfl um but really for your whole career is impacting the game with the few touches that you do have right and I think a lot of players you don't have to be a quarterback to relate with that what is it about you um your game um that you know allows you to do that you know kind of you're on the bench you know and and, and your number gets called and you get on the field and you make plays and you bring so much energy you're screaming and you're demoralizing to defenses what is it about Chris Streveler that allows you 
to um, have this type of impact with the amount of touches that you have, um, you know, uh, that you've had over the course of your career? Yeah, I, I always tell these kids that I train, I'm like, look, it's not about where you get the opportunity, when you get that opportunity or what it looks like. It's about what you do with it. So what are you going to do with it? The ball's in your hands. You got one touch. What are you going to do with it? And so for me, that's my mindset too, is like, okay, I got one play. I'm going to go hard. I'm going to empty the tank. I'm going to give this play everything I have because I don't know what the next play looks like. And so that's how I play the game. And, um, you know, I've always kind of prided myself in being a little bit untraditional as a quarterback in terms of the way I play the game. Um, It's, again, part of my leadership style. And I think something about just seeing a quarterback go out there and you try to run a dude over and put your body on the line. I think it fires up the guys on your team. I think it shows that hey, if he's willing to do it and, and kind of sacrifice his body at times and, and lay it all out there, I got to do the same thing. And I believe that that's what a leader should do. They got to set the tone and I'm never going to ask somebody else to do something that I'm not willing to do. Um, so that's just how I play the game, man. And I take pride in the way I play the game, even though people always have something to say about it because it doesn't maybe it doesn't look like a lot of other guys that play the game. But um, it's gotten me to this point. And again, it's a big part of my leadership style. And it's why I have fun playing the game. I play hard. I love the contact of football. And every single opportunity I get to touch that ball, I'm going to go as hard as I can. We need to know about uh, how many opportunities we can expect, though, because uh, what do you know about maybe a package? I'm not talking about short yardage. I'm not talking about goal line. I'm talking about people looking to the sideline and they're holding up a card with a cowboy hat or a fur coat (laughs) or a shot or something like the Strevler package. What conversations have been had about, you know, having some ownership in uh, the offense and and tailoring things to your skills? Look, I mean, the conversations truthfully have been pretty minimal. I mean, I met with Buck a couple times when I was up there and I spoke with him when I signed and you know, the conversation on my end has always just been, do whatever you need for me to help us win games. That's what I'm willing to do. I'm not worried about the amount of touches. I'm not worried about anything like that. Again, I believe those opportunities present themselves organically. Um, and his feedback has always just been, um, you know, we're going to tailor the offense to the guys that we have. And I mean, we got a lot of weapons on that offense, man. When you look around the dudes we have, it's 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 really exciting to just be, you know, a piece of that wheel. Um, so again, I'm not really sitting here counting touches or making anybody do anything i'm just going to go in there and camp and and play the game the way that i play it and again let those opportunities kind of present themselves organically but i'm excited man we have a really explosive offense we got a lot of really good players talented smart players and i think that that's always going to be exciting um, from a creativity standpoint offensively that sounds very nice we're deleting all of that. No one is ever going to hear any of that. <laughs> Buck, listen to me. Playmakers don't get the ball organically. They get them intentionally. It's one of the best players you have in your locker room. Figure it out. Make sure there's a Strevler package starting week one. We're not getting there late in the season when it gets cold. Week one, we need to get the playmakers involved. That's one of your biggest playmakers. Let's get it done, shall we? Don't worry, Chris. We won't do the talking for you. That's man. right. That's you right. Be all politically correct and, and say the right things. But listen, we got to see more Chris Strevler. But make it happen, my guy. Hey, you guys have transitioned perfectly into the media world. Just chop up all my answers so I say exactly <laughs> what you want me to say, and we'll put it on Instagram where I'll be good to go. That's right. That's right. Well, here's here's the answer that I'm uh, yearning for, and you talked about you know the experiences you had and, and making sure that you get something from them, and you know a blessing uh, you know can come from what people might think is a curse. And bouncing around, that's obviously not ideal, and the path wasn't linear. But you got exposure to different leaders, different coaches, different playmakers, different QBs, different players. What is the one thing that you saw or heard or was taught in your experience in the NFL that really stuck with you? That is a heck of a question. You guys are hitting me with some hard hitters today. I love that. Um, But you're exactly right, man. It has been like the coolest experience for me to be able to be in different locker rooms around different guys, like legends. Like I got to build a really good relationship with Joe Flacco, getting to be around um, uh, Aaron Rodgers, obviously, Kyler Murray, Colt McCoy, Teddy Bridgewater. Like the list goes on and on. And and some, you know, so many guys I've been able to build good relationships with. Um, But the one thing that really stuck with me, um, again, from a leadership perspective, was this past year being in OTAs in camp with the Jets and just seeing the way Aaron – uh, kind of maneuvered as a as a new guy on the team and getting to know guys and 
you know, a guy that deep in their career, oftentimes it'd be kind of rare for, in my opinion, a guy like that to be really branching out, out to, to some of the younger guys and really making that extra effort to be around guys. And he did that every single day. I mean, you're at, you're at lunch. He's sitting with the undrafted rookie tight end and the, and the third string right guard. You know what I mean? He's, he's sitting with these guys, building relationships with them. Um, early on, he's going out to, to the movies. I think we went and saw John Wick. You know, we're going out to the movies with Aaron. We're going out to dinners. We're going to musicals. Like he's organizing these team events for not only like the star guys, but like myself, you know, I'm the third, fourth string quarterback, but he, he doesn't need to invite me to this stuff. And just the way that he approached his leadership from a person to person standpoint really stuck out to me because you always know how important those relationships are with guys in the locker room. But then you see a dude of his caliber, one of the best of all times doing it and really taking the time to go out of his way to build relationships with guys really just showed me a lot of like, you know, how important those relationships are with guys. And even if a person of his caliber can do it, anybody else can do it. Um, So that was just really cool to see a guy like that with that level of experience, really make the extra effort to get to know his teammates, you know, with him being the new guy. You mentioned the media before. Do you think we generally have a misunderstanding of him, given that you saw him operate every day? Because we just see him on McAfee fighting with Jimmy Kimmel. Like, w- w- do you have a different perspective on him? Yeah, I definitely have a different perspective on him. I mean, anytime you get to sit down next to somebody for a number of months and spend time with them outside of work, you definitely have a better understanding for who they are and appreciation. I think, you know, his relationship with the media, it's, it's, it's his relationship with the media, right? A lot of times when people are talking to the media, they have to kind of change what they say or kind of censor things a little bit. And you're only getting a piece of someone when they're doing interviews and talking to the media, you're not seeing them on a day-to-day basis. And so I really don't think you can have a full feel for who somebody is until you're seeing them and how they carry themselves on a day-to-day basis. And honestly, you know, going into that experience, I think everyone has a perception of somebody when you see him on TV, but then getting to know him and how personal, personable he was and such a great teammate and always willing to help. Like we're out doing drills, we're doing stuff on the field. And he's like taking time out of the drill to be like, Hey, no, you're doing this. You need to do this. Or this is what I'm seeing. You got to work on this. Or this is my thought process on this play. Just such a great teacher and such a great leader. And I have nothing but amazing things to say about the way that um, he carried himself in that building and the time that I was around him. You got DB and myself who have spoken for you and will continue to speak for you. And if Buck does not make it happen, we will be loud about it. But you, for yourself, what do you have to say to the fans out there in Winnipeg who didn't get a chance to see you when you first got back a couple of weeks back uh, in Winnipeg? What are, what are your words to the Winnipeg fans as far as what they should expect from C. Strevy this upcoming season? You're going to get somebody that just – plays with full effort every single play. And I'm going to do everything I can to help this team win games. I've told every single person that because that's my that's my truth. That's my priority right now. I just want to win football games and try to win another ring. So that's what you're going to get from me on a play-to-play, game-to-game basis, somebody who's going to empty the gas tank and do everything I can to lift my teammates around me. And I can't even tell you how many times I've looked at the schedule leading up to training camp here and that, that first game against Montreal at home. That place is going to be rocking. So I can't wait to see the Winnipeg fans coming out, getting loud, having a great time. Um, It's just really, really exciting for me to get back up there, be around those people, be in that energy. And, man, I have passion for the game. I've been sitting here for five years, haven't really gotten to play. So I've been building up a lot of fire, a lot of intensity, a lot of passion that I'm ready to put on display when it's time to get back out there and play again. So that's what you're going to see from me, a high energy player who's passionate and intense and someone that's going to give it all for their teammates. So cannot wait to get up there, man, and open the season up. So it's going to be exciting. Making me want to play again, Well, man. listen, uh, not making you want to play against them because I'm afraid. No, I'm, I'm, hey, I'm, ask Coach O'Shea if he's got a little bit of room there. Little bit there. Oh, man, because listen, uh, you know, you got obviously the athletic ability. You, you have that heart and hustle, which I think is a talent because if it wasn't, everyone would have it. Uh, you had a guy who's been able to refine his craft for essentially half a decade in, you know, one of the top leagues in the world. And, and and now you've had this caged animal, right, that you're about to unleash on the CFL. So uh, scary hours for defenses. We need that package, Buck. Don't make me ask you again. <laughs> we need that Strevy package. Let's go. At least 15 a game. And I'm not even talking about just blowouts. I'm talking about all the games. Listen, the other thing we learned, though, is my guy chooses wisely. 
uh, Arizona, uh -huh. Miami, uh -huh. New York. People might say Baltimore is an outlier, but the DMV low key has some great seafood. <laughs> and now, now, God's country, Winnipeg. So he chooses wisely. Uh, so glad that you chose to be back in the league. Thank you for choosing us to talk about it. Well, hey, I appreciate you guys, man. I, I love what you guys are doing. I'm such a big proponent of the CFL down in America, and I think bringing more media attention and good social media content is humongous for continuing to grow the game down here. So um, anyway, I can help you guys in your media ventures to continue to spread the word about this great league that I have so much respect for. I just want people in America to respect the league the same way that I do. So um, I appreciate what you guys are doing, man. You guys do such a great job, and I'm following along with um, all your episodes and all your Instagram content. So appreciate you guys. Man, appreciate your time, Chris, and uh, much love. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, Aaron Rodgers had a had a weekly session with McAfee. Uh, we could do the same with you. We can't pay you a million dollars to do it, <laughs> but uh, but we'll definitely be bothering you to talk about the season uh, more and more. Thanks, man. All the best, and most importantly, stay healthy. Hey, I appreciate you. I'm I'm happy to come on anytime. So thank you guys. Y'all take care. Oh.